Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Happy Wednesday. For those that are here live, for those that are tuning in any day that you tune in, happy whatever day it is. L'chaim, for those that are still rocking their coffee. We've been talking a lot about this idea of speech. Really important piece of this work that we're doing. No matter where you're tuning in, we, it's like there's, a, there's like a, a flag that you put in the world of speech. And you got to get to the flag. It's a city into itself. Speech is not like a thing that we just sort of have that is just the bridge between thinking and action. It's much more than that. Yesterday, we began the process of describing it as a bridge, but I don't want anyone to think that that's just all it really is. It's a world into itself. It's the distinguishing factor between animal and human. When God created man and he blew the spirit, if you will, into his, into, his, into, into men, the commentators say he gave him the ability to speak. It's a very, speech is a very big deal in the spiritual world. In some ways, even more important than action. And what we need to do and continue to do together and the work that we're trying to do together is really to appreciate who we are. Growth, greatness comes not from a place of I am not. It comes from a place of I don't know who I am, but I sense that who I am is so much greater than what I am manifesting every single day. The world around us can make us feel really small. Not in our accomplishments, in our capacity. The world can send us messages saying, if you're not this age, then you're losing in the journey of success and wealth and marriage and friends. And how old are you already? How old are you? Well, let me show you a picture of somebody who was six years old when they started their first company. Well, by the time you're 26, by the time you're 20, even how things are structured. Speak to someone who's 50. And speak to someone who's 18 and have the conversation be about growth and change and um, being somebody. And usually someone who's 50 would be like, well, I'm, I'm 50. 18 year olds would be like, yeah, I'm just starting my life. Why is the 50 year old not starting his life or her life? Why? How, how many years you got left? I don't know. You can have a whole nother half a century. And with modern technology, it could be even more. Why is the 18 year old more likely to have a much better reaction to change and growth? Because what, because they're in high school and they spend all their time just studying for the future versus someone who's 50 who spent most of his time living in the present? Just a mentality. We feel small if we don't accomplish by this point. There's no deadlines. There's no timelines. That's all made up. In the spiritual world, every moment of every day is the chance for to become the person we're supposed to be. And if you even look at just history and for sure biblical history, you will see that some of the greatest things that people have accomplished have accomplished later in their lives. Every moment is a chance. However, it ha we have to build up who we are and then contrast who we could be, or better said, who we could be, not who we are. Contrast who we could be, our capacity, with who we are today, our current state. And that's where we say, wow, I'm so much bigger than that. What I'm doing now is not who I am. And it could be more. And one of the areas that we have totally thrown to the side is speech. And there's reason for it because we live in a physical world and there are a lot of people that just talk. And if all you do is listen to speech news all day and you don't change, it's not going to work. So because it's hard to connect speech to action, action we can't dismiss because action is action, so we'll just dismiss speech. speech. And because you live in a world where people say things, and so as a result, when you're young, you want people to be more resilient. So you say things like sticks and stones may break our bones, but uh, words will never hurt me. That's, that's great for when you're seven. But if you're married and you keep on disparaging your spouse, well, guess what? That's much worse than anything you're going to do. 
And if you're a parent and you keep on demeaning your child, then sticks or stones won't hurt them as much as words. Okay, when you're, when you're a kid and you got to get to the playground, we'll lose the line. But you can't keep, we can't keep that going. And what we're doing these past few days, and for those who are with us now for the first time, we we'll go back to Sunday, we're starting this new chapter, is really just realize that speech is supposed to be the point of creation. That's really the moment where the world changes. That's really the moment. Hold on a second, I'm going to adjust this. That's really the moment where we become, we, we, we bring something to the world. Our actions are going to follow our speech. And when your brain realizes it, when we condition into our minds this reality that when it comes out of my mouth, it's done, a lot of the pushback that our minds give us starts to fall by the wayside. I'm going to prepare that subject if I've already committed to speak about it. So if I am halfway through preparation and I'm tired, I don't have the same level of pushback than if I didn't agree to speak for it and I just am studying for, for it because I am interested in it. Commitment silences all of that I'm too tired desire for comfortness. And if you live in a world where you need commitment to other people, then fine, commit. But we, what we really got to get to is a place in which just by speaking is a commitment. And then you don't need other people to create the commitment. And yesterday we spoke about this idea of where create a space in which your speech is your bond. And the example that I gave is the example that I got from my mentor who spoke about four things on a paper. And I know that Orit emailed me that she actually does it, which is incredible. Write four things down every day. Try it. And when, the, when those things hit the paper, it's as if you are building picture, you are creating a creation. You are creating a bond between your words are now, have created a reality. And if you write down, send email to John, the email to John is as good as done. And now you just got to bring it into this world. You got to manifest it. And if you maintain that level of exercise, what it's not, not only will you become more productive, that's the actions of this. More importantly, you're going to, we, we will start to learn that there are parts of my speech that are real. We have this, by the way, you know, where we have this, I think it's like one or two things left in the world. We have this with one question. If you, if you ask somebody, will you marry me? And that person says, yes, that's just speech, right? But all of a sudden, just with two words, one question and one answer, the whole thing is under 10 words. Everyone gets excited and people start making, spending money. And then you got parties. There's white dresses involved. There's fancy flowers involved. Can you imagine a guy asks a woman, will you marry me? She says, yes. And then he shows up like six months later. He's like, where, where are you going? Why are you in a white dress? And she's like, we're getting married. She's like, oh yeah, I was just, I was just talking. Can you imagine? Right? Then his wedding becomes his funeral, right? Like it was just, it was just words. I didn't really mean them. You know, because in society, what we have left is like a couple of lines. When you say the words, will you marry me? Society sort of agrees that you don't just say those words. Those words don't come out of your mouth unless you were ready to commit. That is the perfect example of where my words build a bond. You get married when you say, will you marry me? Now you gotta manifest it all the way into the wedding. But when you ask that question and she says, yes, you gotta assume that you've now built a bond. When we start to see our words as super powerful, our words will have more power. Remember, in the spiritual world, intention is what to, to, it, it, intention is what gives power. When I, when the intentions that come out of our words are, I am speaking in a way that builds bonds. We will create spiritual bonds, which will have physical ramifications. We spoke about this yesterday with this idea of how a person could get forgiveness or vows or. A, a wedding ceremony. But I want to take it one step further today. 
because there's another area of our, our mouths that we have to start to watch. We don't appreciate, before we start getting onto what this means for other people, which we'll get to, but we're still in the world right now of what comes out of my mouth is powerful. And every one of us right now, as we speak, has like a number. If I'd have to go from one to a hundred, a hundred being whatever I say is going to be true and zero being, it doesn't matter. I just talk. I lie. I don't lie. I, I, you know, I make people feel good. I don't, I make commitments that don't mean anything to me like that. When we zero means my words are worthless. A hundred means my word, my words are powerful. Every one of us, sit somewhere in that continuum. Sometimes my words are powerful, sometimes they're not. Not really. Maybe here, I can try it, right? And what we need to do together, and what we need to do each of us in our own lives, is just walk down the path to recognize that the things that come out of mouth is really powerful. And we're gonna go into things like this. What it has on people, the research of what it does on your own brain, Navy SEALs, affirmations, so that's powerful. But as you walk down the road of making it more powerful, we encounter different X aspects of speech and we have to appreciate them. And one of the most important aspects of speech that we need to understand because it, 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 it devalues what comes out of our mouth is negative speech. Not only is it in complaining and assuming it's gonna be bad forget that yet. I'm just talking about how we speak about others and ourselves. There's a great story that I heard out of Jerusalem. It's a powerful story. There was a, a school where one of the girls in the school, a post high school rabbinical, uh, I remember rabbinical, post high school academy. And there was a bunch of, a lot of girls that went to this academy and one of them got engaged. And it was wonderful. The girls were excited for her and she got engaged. She was very young and they were so happy. And the next day in the, there was a park right near the school and there's a couple of her friends talking about her and they were a little envious. They wouldn't mention it. They're not going to, they weren't consciously aware of it. They just were a little threatened. Why her, not us. So they started speaking Badly about her. Oh, she thinks she's so this, or she's not so much. She thinks she's so smart. She comes across as smart. She's not so smart. And the two of them start just like bad mouthing their friend. Not because they're bad people, because, you know, it's like passive aggressive, you know, sort of lines like that. And they're just having a conversation about this girl, and it's not a positive conversation. You know what she said last week? Let me tell you something. She comes across as being so so and so. She's not so so and so. I got to tell you, she's not so. I know. She's dating now. She looks good on the dates, but like, come on. Come on. All of a sudden, an older woman walks up to these two to these two girls on the park bench and says, girls, I want to thank you. And the girls say, for what? She goes, this girl you're speaking about got engaged. They're like, yeah, we know. And she goes, I'm sorry I overheard your conversation. You're right next to me. You're talking pretty loudly, uh, negatively about this girl. And they're like, well, you know. Uh, and they're like, well, guess what? Well, the, the, the boy she got engaged to was my son. This girl's engaged to my son. I had no idea all the things that she is. I thought she was much greater girl than I guess she is. But now that I'm hearing you speak about her, I realize that she's really not good for my son. So thank you, because I'm going to go tell my son he's going to break off the engagement. So I appreciate the information. And the girls are like, no, 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 no. We didn't mean it. That's not what we meant. No, we were just, you know, listen, it's, it's, it, we wanted, uh, it, 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 it was, uh, it, it, and they're like, they're panicking. She's like, no, well, listen, you know, it's truth. No one was even listening to you girls. You girls, I guess we're talking the truth. Like, it really wasn't true. We really didn't mean it. We're so sorry. No, no, no. And they were, they were losing it. And the, and the lady says, she goes, she goes, well, it's good news for you. She goes, they go, why? He goes, she goes, but I'm, because I'm not really the mom of that boy, but I could have been. So watch what you say in public or watch what you say at all. And the lady walks off. Is that awesome? There's a great man named, Michael Rothschild, he runs an incredible organization called the Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation, an organization that basically, did, whose whole mission is to work, work on speech and to help us build the power of our speech in the right way. He said to me once, he said, if you wanna understand how your words should leave your mouth, a 
assume that if you're speaking about somebody else, picture them in the room. That's it. If you would say it, say it. If you wouldn't say it, don't say it. Simple, powerful, life-changing principle. When you speak about somebody else, a parent, an in-law, a friend, a sister, a child, unless you have to, in a real, whatever, if you have to sit with your wife or husband and use common sense. But the basic principle is, if you speak about somebody else, picture they're there and then ask yourself, would they say it? Would you say it? Because if you wouldn't say those words with them there, why are you saying them when they're not there? You know why? Because we think our words don't matter. Who cares what I say? Who cares what it is? We don't realize that our words are causing irreparable damage in the minds of the person listening about this other being. In the spiritual world, actually, according to opinions, we're actually giving testimony spiritually against somebody else, which is why speaking badly about, about family members is insane. But more importantly from all of that, it conditions our mouths to have no filter, to not be sensitive. When we speak ill of somebody else, what we're doing is we're conditioning in our brains that we're not empathetic, right? We are conditioning our words to remind ourselves that I am not a person of sympathy or empathy. I don't see great in other people. I don't give people the benefit of the doubt. Can you imagine what she did? Do you know what happened last week? Let me tell you something. He's not so. This guy's totally incompetent. How many times do I go into a company? This is what I do for a living. I go into companies. How many, this guy, everyone's, everybody, he's incompetent. He's incompetent. She's incompetent. Everyone's incompetent. Then they get into a room and everyone's like, oh, you're wonderful. Oh, you're wonderful. I'm like, what's going on over here? Everybody thinks everyone else is incompetent, and, but you can never say it in front of anyone because everyone's too weak to do that. No one has the guts to confront anybody. So instead, but in your own office, you close the doors, you make fun of somebody. All you're doing is conditioning upon yourself that you're a person that doesn't see the best in people and you're a person who's too weak to bring out a problem. It's here. And it impacts us. It impacts us big time. When I speak bad about somebody else, what I'm saying is I'm conditioning my brain to see bad in someone else. Guess what happens when I look in the mirror? Guess what happens when I fail? I am so used to, to, to trashing someone. I, guess what happens to how I see the world? Guess what happens to all the opportunities that are in front of me? I can't see them. Guess what happens when I hit a wall and I gotta get through it? I've been spending so much, much of my time talking about how people fail. I don't even have it in myself that I'm gonna succeed. I didn't even do anything. All I'm doing is talking. But talking conditions my brain to focus on things and miss things. Talking conditions me as to who I am. Just by seeing good in somebody and speaking about it, I feel better. Try this, by the way. Try this. This is a very powerful. We have so many exercises here. I have to have a list. We have to have a list of exercises. Maybe Sunday will be like exercise day. What do you think? Like we'll do like a, a workout with all the things that I'm telling you to do. So think, try doing this every once in a while. I do this sometimes. Sometimes I'm not having like a down day. If I, let's say I fail at something, something like that, and I just can't pick myself up sometimes. You know what I will do? Honestly, sometimes I'll try to give somebody else a compliment that they're not even expecting. And I feel awesome. Try doing that. Try this just once, today, 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 once. Pick someone in your contacts, scroll through your WhatsApp, find anybody. You don't have to call them because you have WhatsApp, so just video, just, just voice note them. <clears throat> just leave someone a message. Hi, whoever, just want to let you know, I was thinking about how great you are at this, or you did this wonderfully, or I saw you last week, I didn't compliment you, or you look great, or. Just find somebody who's not expecting a compliment from you, give them a compliment, and you will feel, see how, how awesome that feels. Just words. When we start to realize that these words are building and destroying worlds and lives, and the more I realize that when that 
thought comes from my head and it passes down my schema and it comes out my mouth, this mechanism called the filter is maybe the most powerful thing I have. Because as it comes out into the world, I've created something. And it's having an impact on the people and then it's having an impact back on me. Just the recognition starts to build this appreciation for what we have. We've been given this unique tool that only humans have. Speech, articulate speech. And the more I appreciate it, the more I recognize that it's a value and a power, the more I can use it properly. And it becomes the linchpin to who I am and what I can achieve. All right, tomorrow we're going to hopefully hit the power of some of the research from the Navy SEALs, and maybe next week we'll talk about its impact on other people. But, but I think we're going to – we there's some more research that I want to throw, throw out there. But until then, try this, by the way. Put these two, put these two in, these things into practice. Tell me how it goes. Friday's our Q&A day. Soon I'm going to circle back with Andy Fear when we can do it every day. But try it. Try it. Why not? That's what we're here for, right? You have one life. Why can't I? Try it. When you're talking to somebody else, think to yourself, just once. If you're talking to somebody else, think to yourself, would I say it if the person was in the room? And number two, scroll through something today. Give somebody a real, but make it real account. Not like, hi, how are you? You're awesome. Make it like real. Just want to let you know when you come to the room, you always light up the room, whatever. Make it real. And realize that this gift called our mouth, this powerful thing we have, really, it's a gift. And if we use it right, man, what it can do for ourselves and others. All right. Thanks so, guys. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. You could always watch us on demand. You know the platforms. It's an honor to be with you. Really appreciate it. And with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow morning. Speak to you soon. Have a great day.